you know, any man who who was uh, sympathetic to her and she she liked, she tended to fall in love very quickly because you've got to remember she was really a very yeah. innocent kind mm-hmm. of girl when she married Charles. I mean, so overall, I mean, I think you kind of touched on this a little bit, but do you feel like scandals do boost the monarchy a little bit? Because like you said, if you're not writing about them, that's not a good thing. But, you know, yeah, I, I, yeah. I completely agree. I mean, being ignored um, would be far worse for the royal family than these scandals. I think that, but they have to be in proportion. As long as the scandals don't become so big right. that they are really a, a danger to the fundamental aspects of the royal family, then they're actually a good thing because um, they draw attention to the royal family and people then begin to think if the pa- if the newspapers criticise the royals too much, um, people begin to think... Uh, they want to defend the royals because they they fear that we may lose the royal family. And all the research suggests that however many scandals the royals get involved in, the overwhelming majority of people in the UK still like the idea of having a royal family. I think that's because the rest of us lead, lead these humdrum lives in small, you know, apartments and houses. And the royals live with, you know, footmen with powdered hair. Right. And, you know, they, they have five or six enormous palaces. They have servants to get them dressed. And so we can kind of, it's like a fantasy world that we can glimpse. We, we only glimpse it, but as long as it's there, we, it's it's another aspect of of our world that that's a sort of fantasy aspect, and it's but it's real. Mm-hmm. So you know, scandals are damaging. I think too, the newspapers almost realise that too. You know, they know if they go too far, and let's say the royal family were to disappear, well, what are the newspapers going to write about? You right. know, royal stories always sell, so mm-hmm. they don't want to you know kill the goose that laid the golden egg, as it were. Um, so I think scandals. Do work both ways, and actually, some scandals um, make us almost make us feel better about the royals. I mean, I think Diana is a great example because she used the press almost shamelessly, the media, but she was actually really good at it. And her her you know reputations of royals soared even when the press occasionally mocked her, mm-hmm. you know, because she had that little shy sideways right. glance, mm-hmm. and you know they they accused her of being a bit dim. She'd been to the best schools but you know she'd hardly any qualifications but you know they built her up Mm -hmm. and the royal family benefited from that in many ways I think Mm -hmm. definitely and you also have so many fun like tidbits in this book too especially about Diana with one of her uh, lovers caught with his pants down and (laughs) you know saying that she was a a messy person but a girl's girl what are some of those fun tidbits that you can't wait for people to read it's it's true she was she was uh, someone who was very close to her said oh she was like a student who'd just gone to you know university and Uh wasn't used to you know, uh, putting her clothes away. So she'd leave her clothes all over the floor. She'd be tripping over them. Um, She was also a bit sort of dotty and absent-minded. I mean, there's one story where um, she liked sunbathing on, she had a private terrace at Kensington Palace, which was surrounded by um, sort of shrubs in, in, Mm. in big pots so that you couldn't see when she, and she, she would sunbathe topless on this, uh, this little balcony. But one day, because she wasn't, she was never sort of really paying attention. She didn't notice that some of the tubs had been moved no. and she stood up while after sunbathing for a while, looked out and there were two workmen who were staring at her. And I, I thought the wonderful part of this, you know, their eyes locked and the two workmen, clearly underneath the fact that they were workmen, they were gentlemen, they simply bowed and <laughs> turned away, which I think is a marvellous story. Um, so, yes, yeah, she was, you know, and she was very human. When, um, because she was so upset that, uh, that Charles wouldn't give up Camilla, mm. um, you know, any man who, who was uh, sympathetic to her and she, she liked, she tended to fall in love very quickly because you've got to remember she was really a very yeah. innocent kind mm-hmm. of girl when she married Charles. She hadn't had a career much. She'd grown up in this eccentric aristocratic family. Um, so she had a string of, of admirers, some of whom became lovers. And I think she would invite them to Kensington Palace against all the rules, but she had to smuggle them in. Sometimes um, she would dress them up as policemen um, or she would put you know, a scarf and dark glasses and say, oh, it's an advisor. And um, on, a, on several occasions, um, they, the, the servants spotted them 
these these lovers um, when they were leaving her room or in one case uh, one chap whose name I won't mention um, he managed to get himself locked out of her apartment but he was only wearing shorts and a t-shirt because he he, would, he it was the middle of the night and he had to hide behind a giant potted plant that's amazing <laughs> <laughs> it's such a wonderful story such a wonderful story and there's so many wonderful stories in this book so Tom thank you so much and to everybody watching make sure you pick up Scandals of the Royal Palaces, an intimate memoir of royals behaving badly. It is a must read. And I'm so excited that we got the chance to chat today. Thank you so much. Thank you.